Hello, I'm Daniel. I'm going to read to you a section from this book, The Chan Handbook, today. It's by Master Swan Wah, and I'm going to read this section and then I'm going to comment on it a little bit. And this section is called Thought Cultivation Eliminates False Thinking. Thought Cultivation Eliminates False Thinking. So here it is. And then at the end, I'll comment on it. Chan sitting is also known as thought cultivation. From this definition, we know that it is impossible not to have false thinking during Chan sitting. Normally, our false thinking comes and goes just like waves on water. Waves come up because of wind. When we meditate, why do false thoughts arise? It is because our self-nature still contains falsehood. This falsehood is like the wind, and false thoughts are like waves stirred by the wind. As we practice meditation, we need to silence our thoughts. That means we must stop the false winds. Thought cultivation aims at reducing false thoughts and stopping the waves that constantly arise in our minds. Stilling means quieting the thoughts so they cease their movement. When we cease th thinking and deliberating, we can give rise to samadhi power. Over time, as samadhi power develops, wisdom will manifest. With wisdom, our minds can illuminate the true nature of all dharmas. When not a single thought arises, the entire substance manifests. When the mind is completely stilled so that not a single shred of false thinking remains, we will be able to enter samadhi and our original wisdom will thus manifest. We will then truly understand the basic reason why we are human beings and will no longer be moved by external things. When the myriad external conditions do not move our minds, we can then be considered to be in unmoving suchness where all is absolutely clear and constantly understood. At that time, none of the eight winds, praise and ridicule, ridicule, sorrow and joy, gain and loss, defamation and eulogy, will be able to move our minds. People may praise us or ridicule us as they wish in favorable or adverse conditions. We will advance vigorously. No suffering or joy will move our minds. Gain refers to things that benefit one. Loss refers to things that harm one. Defamation means to slander. Eulogy is to commend or glorify one's name. Unmoved by the eight winds, I sit erect on a purple golden lotus. Not being blown about by the eight winds is the result of thought cultivation of silencing the mind. Moved by external factors, we can then understand how to practice sitting meditation. So, at first, when I started reading this, I thought, well, I always tell people, meditation is not trying to silence our thoughts. Meditation is tr not trying to not think about anything. And at first, when I started to read this, I thought, is he going to say meditation is the opposite? Is the opposite of what I tell people? But no. He says we are going to put down false thinking. False thinking is not the same as eliminating all thought. I, I truly believe eliminating all thought is not something we can do. That being said, though, I think we do have the power to choose the direction our thoughts go in, or at least have an influence over the direction our thoughts go in. So we don't start thinking about something that happened two years ago that doesn't matter today and suddenly we're unable to sleep at night, right? That's failing to choose our thoughts. Can we choose our thoughts? I think we can. I think this is only slightly related, but I saw a meme that said, you can't change the people around you, but you can change the people around you can't change the people around you, but you can change the people around you. That's really fun, right? That's a really fun use of language. You can't change people. You can change who you're around. You can change the circumstances. That's what that little little half joke means. Um, we can't stop our thoughts, but we can make some decisions about where we want our mind to go, where we want to focus our attention. And that's what we're learning to do really is where to focus our attention. So we can focus on what we need to focus on so we can focus on also the good instead of dwelling on the bad and getting caught in negative mind states because that happens very easily something somebody says something really mildly rude and we spend hours just reflecting on it like does that person not like me i don't know when really just it didn't mean anything that can happen all the time so this is about choosing our thoughts and then it's also about the worldly winds, or the eight winds, it's called. 
praise and ridicule, sorrow and joy, gain and loss, defamation and eulogy. That is just letting shit get to us. Letting shit get to us. And what he's saying here is, if we learn to dwell in our true nature, if we learn to see the world around us as it really is, if we learn, learn how to choose our thoughts and not be so caught up in bullshit all the time, then... We're not going to be pulled around by the world. We're not going to be pulled around by the world. We really can... Uh, praise can take us to an unhealthy place where we have no humility, right? And then blame. We don't want to be blamed for things we didn't do. We don't want to be attacked. But we can learn how to sit, notice, oh, well, this doesn't matter right now. This doesn't matter right now. I'm obsessing over nonsense. I can put this away. This doesn't matter right now, right? Instead of just holding on tightly and carrying it around and saying, oh my gosh, this is so important, right? So I think we can learn to do that. That is the trait that's called equanimity. It means not letting shit get to you. It means moving through the world and just letting things be as they are instead of obsessing over how things aren't the way we want them to be. And if we can overcome false thinking, then we can develop that mind of equanimity. That's a very important and powerful virtue that we can try to develop. So that's all I had to say for today. And again, this section was called Thought Cultivation Eliminates False Thinking. I guess I should mention thought cultivation. Like, I don't think of it that way, but we could. We could use that terminology for trying to choose our thoughts, trying to not be caught up in negative thoughts and trying to control where our mind goes. Thought cultivation, sure, it's fine. Cultivation's not a word we think about a lot. It's like planting a garden, right? So the thoughts you water, the thoughts you give a lot of attention to are the ones that will grow. So in our cultivation, in that metaphor, we want to not water the seeds that are bad, the seeds that are harmful to us, the seeds that keep us awake at night, right? So that's all I have for today. Um, thank you for taking the time to watch this video. Have a good day.